Most people, when they go buy a fragrance, they just kind of walk up to the fragrance counter and they're like, hey, you know, I'm looking for a new fragrance. Do you have something for me? What's the newest and best fragrance? And the fragrance person behind the counter will have some knowledge, but you know, they will kind of guide you towards the things that they can sell right now or need to sell right now. What I have for you in this video is 10 fragrances that have been tried and true and voted over and over again by the fragrance community to be some of the best fragrances that are available for many, many years. So next time you go to the counter after watching this video, you'll know exactly which ones to pick out of what line and you will know exactly what you would want. That way you have some fragrance armor next time you go meet somebody at the fragrance counter. This video is not really geared towards the person who has a few fragrances in their collection and knows these already. This is more for someone who is trying to go out and really get the most bang for their buck for something that is always going to smell good. These right here are always going to be uh, desired and wanted and worn because they're just this good. But if you have a, you know, a larger collection, then this video is probably not going to be for you. One of the first ones I think you should go out and try is one that's really truly tried and true. It's a 2010 fragrance and you probably heard of it already. It's called Blue de Chanel. It is this one right here. And Blue de Chanel is one of those fragrances that's kind of loud. People already notice it. People know which one it is. So what I like doing with this one is I like layering it with its brothers. It also comes in an EDT, which is this one. It has an EDP, which is this one. It says Eau de Parfum on the bottom right here. And then you have another one that came out a little bit later, and that is the Parfum edition. And the Parfum is gonna be golden on top while these on here are on silver. You can't go wrong with any of these. Kind of think of it like as you go down from the EDT to the EDP to the Parfum, they get a little bit deeper, they get a little bit heavier. So what I like doing, I like mixing these, like one spray of each or something like that. But you know, that would be for somebody starting out, it would be kind of crazy because it's a few hundred dollars to get all the bottles. So if you had to pick one of these three, I would go with the Eau de Parfum because it's gonna be right in the middle. The Parfum is gonna sit a little bit closer to the skin. It's a little bit denser, a little bit heavier. If you like that, that's great. And this one right here is gonna be a little bit overworn. Too many people have the Eau de Toilette. So the Eau de Parfum is gonna be my choice from the Blue de Chanel, but it's a fabulous fragrance, guaranteed to get compliments with this one, and your wife will love it. Next, we will look at a fragrance that is one of the best fragrances ever created, if I may say so. It is the 2011 Dior Homme Intense, this fragrance right here. This is going to be a powdery iris with plenty of sort of woody nuances to keep this one amazingly masculine. Now everyone is going to love that. It's one of the best date fragrances you can buy and has been since 2011. Now there's also a perfume version of this one. It's gonna add some agar wood, I believe. People really like that one too, but it's harder to find. For me personally, the Dior Homme Intense from 2011 is plenty. Now as a side note though, you gotta be careful that you don't get by accident the new Dior Homme from 2020. In 2020, they changed the this staple right here into a completely different fragrance. So the new one looks like this. And this one right here, if you look at it, it doesn't have the writing on top. It just has the Diorum sort of thing, right? The DED up here. So the new one in 2020 is gonna be a completely different fragrance. Make sure you get the Dior Om Intense, the original from 2011. Just as a side note, not that the new Dior Om is not a good one. It's just not an iris fragrance like this. And this has gotta be a staple if you wanna go out on a date and you wanna smell like, you know, a billion bucks this one will guarantee do it. As far as that new one is concerned, it came out, people were really super upset. And now, you know, the verdict is sort of 50-50. As it's been around for a little while, people are starting to like it, but it's rising in the ranks. Maybe it'll make the list next time. Now, since I told you, you know, get the EDP for the Blue de Chanel is gonna be the best choice, you know, in either direction and, you know, get the Diorum Intense instead of the regular Diorum. The next one is kind of similar. There is Spice Bomb from Victor and Rolf. This one right here. So just go ahead and save yourself the trouble and go ahead and get the Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb Extreme. Most people will like that one just a little bit better. It's a spicy fragrance and it's got a little bit of freshness in it from the lavender. It's a really wonderful fragrance if you like it more on the spicy side. Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb. Get the extreme. 
Talking about freshness, the next one is an Aqua di Gio fragrance. It's from Giorgio Armani. The original came out in 1996 and it looks something like this. Let me put it up here. If you like that kind of fragrance, then you, of course, most people today will go with the overhyped fragrance and they're going to go with the Profumo. Now, it's been a little bit overhyped by some people and lots of people have worn it. I actually got a big bottle. It's going to last me forever. It's a really good scent. However, this 2015 fragrance has been discontinued as far as I know. There's probably still plenty of bottles out there if you want to go with the scent profile. Uh, but since a lot of people are going to be wearing this, especially in the summer, it's a great summertime fragrance. I actually would go with Profundo. That's the one that I've been wearing lately. Uh, it's got some added minerals in it, gives it a more of a contemporary feel. It's really nice, a little bit more on the contemporary side. There's also a uh, Profundo Light. It's a little bit of a lighter version. It's also very nice. So those two are going to be my choice, something for the summertime. And you know, and since we're on the hype train, especially Aqua di Gio Profumo, this one was released in 2009 and it is still one of my favorite fragrances ever. That's La Nuit de l'Homme by Yves Saint Laurent. 2009 2009. It's one of the most desired fragrances. It's a 10 out of 10. It's perfect for dates. If you don't want a heavy, heavy iris fragrance, you can switch up for this one with a nice, beautiful note of cardamom. I think this one really is one of the most beautiful cardamom fragrances that is out there. It is absolutely stunning. Uh, is it dated? Not at all. Anybody can wear that. Anybody will love that. My wife loves this one still after all those years. It's a really wonderful fragrance. Now, if you want something that's a little bit uh, more maybe contemporary, maybe you don't want to wear this one because lots of people are wearing it, you know, or have been wearing it, then you can go with the new release from 2021. Same line, La Nuit de l'Homme, and this is called Blue Electric. What this one does is going to give you a ginger note in here, but it has the same sort of depth profile as this one does. It's really wonderful. It's a great addition to this whole line. All of them are wonderful, but you have to have the La Nuit de l'Homme. And if you want something with a little bit of a ginger note, give it a modern profile, then this one, the Blue Electric from 2021 is gonna be the way to go. Absolute perfect fragrances for a date. This would be a great time for you to leave a like if you're getting anything out of this at all. Or maybe even subscribe for more fragrance content. I would love to have you on board. And of course, a list like this, you have to really add a fragrance in there. And, and some of you, like I said, it's probably not for you because you already have this one and you're probably maxed out since it has a slew, you know, of clones. But you have to put in a, in a list like this, you have to put, it's a niche and the next two are gonna be niche. It's gonna be, you know, Creed Aventus. Now, many people, you know, have this one, have tried this one. There are many clones out there, like I said. But the original Creed Aventus is still so good. You know, the pineapple on top, the bergamot pineapple with the ambergris dry down is a superb fragrance for all year long. It's really an amazing scent. Now, of course, this one is going to have different batches and some of them are smokier and this and that and this and that. But for me, it still smells really, really nice. Well, if you want something along this scent profile of the Aventus, Mont Blanc Explorer is going to come closest and it gives me the most joy that's close to wearing Aventus itself is going to be Mont Blanc Explorer. Though what you're sacrificing here though is you're going to sacrifice the ambergris dry down that you have with the Aventus. Other than that, uh, as far as wearing it, the Mont Blanc Explorer is going to feel really close. And of course, it's a fifth of the price. So that's always nice. Uh, but I do wear this one on easier days. And when I want to smell like just fabulous and I want to smell amazing a few hours later as it dries down, I love the signature ambergris dry down on the Aventus. And of course, the next one is also going to be a niche fragrance. And you have to try this one as well. It's going to be a little bit more expensive, just like the Aventus is, but you have to get your nose on it if you haven't tried it yet. And that one's going to be Parfums de Marley, and it is Leighton. It's a beautiful bottle. The caps are nice and heavy. This is going to be a sort of beautiful apple, bright apple lavender fragrance. Uh, surrounded by vanilla. Uh, this smells like a, you know, sport coat, younger guy, totally debonair, absolutely fabulous. Now, of course, you know, the Parfums de Mali fragrances are going to cost you a, a bit of money. Another one that I found that you can wear instead of this one, if you like that and you don't want to spend quite as much money for it, is going to be one that I found uh, last year, and it is Lalique 
white and black. This one is going to smell a lot like the Parfums de Marly. Imagine if you took Sadik and Voltaire's, this is him, and you merged it with Leighton from Parfums de Marly. That's what you get in here. Now, the, the bigger note in this fragrance is going to be closer to Parfums de Marly, so it's gonna have a little bit more of a spicier approach to Leighton. And you can have this one, the Lalique, I mean, online you can get this one for a really good price. It is very much worth the price that you can buy this one for. A great fragrance if you like a little bit more spice to Leighton. Another one of those that is really amazing that I think you need to get your hands on and really try and it's you know sort of a 10 out of 10 fragrance you can wear it anywhere and always get compliments people love it. It's going to be Bulgari Man in Black. I mean lots of people talk about this one for good reason. As far as the notes are concerned in this one you're gonna have some rum, you're gonna have some tobacco, you're gonna have a little bit of leather in this one and uh, iris and a little bit of tuberose. Actually, I think I'm going to give this one a spray. I really like the way this one smells. It's really wonderful. Ooh, look at that. Powerful. Mm, it's such a good fragrance. Now, I can see myself wearing this one almost all year long. Who doesn't like rum and tobacco and leather all year long? I certainly do. Now, don't, when you go out there and you get the Man in Black, don't do what I did at the very beginning when I bought this one. I bought this one online and actually blind bought it. I didn't do the research on it, remember earlier? I didn't. Now, I'm glad I did because what I did is I bought this one thinking that it was black and this is the Bulgari Man and it is the black cologne. So don't be fooled. There's a Bulgari Man in black. Let me see if I can do this here. There's, see that? Pulgari Man in black, and then there is a black cologne. So don't be confused by those two. Make sure you get the one that's in the rose gold if you like it spicier, something for, you know, when it's not too hot outside, and you could wear this one when it's really super hot outside. You can have all of these, you know, online for a really good price. Uh, the cologne version is going to be a lighter citrus of the Bulgari Man. It doesn't smell anything like this, but it's also a really nice scent. Just make sure you don't get them confused because it says black cologne and a man in black. Next one we're gonna do is gonna be a Shivashi and it is back to the iris and it is one of the best releases in I think last year, last two years. It's really an amazing scent. Actually, I think this one came out last year in 2022. Gentlemen Shivashi Reserve Privé, released in 22, is going to be a lot like the Valentino Uomo's like the Dior Om Intense from earlier, this one right here. Now, what this one has that it makes it a little bit different, it's going to add chestnut and the note of whiskey. Now, the whiskey is not going to be terribly loud. It's not a boozy fragrance by any means. It is maybe hidden somewhere in the background, you can tell, but the chestnut is definitely there. So it's a really beautiful fragrance, a great release for 2022. And I guess you could just get this one and it's a it's lighter it's not as heavy as the diorum intense so you could probably wear this one a little bit more throughout the year than you could the diorum intense so if you're looking for something along that line but you want to be able to wear it for more than just dates i wear this one to work all the time and absolutely love it the next one is going to be a leather fragrance and it has to be in this list it's without a doubt probably one of my favorite leather fragrances of all time i love wearing this fragrance there's lots of fragrances that are kind of similar than this one. It is Ombre Leather from Tom Ford. This one right here smells like an expensive luxury sports car while you're wearing a leather jacket. I mean, it'll make you feel like a million bucks. You'll get compliments galore with this one. Everybody loves it. Lots of people wear it. It's a great fragrance. I absolutely adore wearing this one. You can dress this one up and you can wear it down. I mean, who doesn't like a wonderful leather fragrance? Always get compliments with Tom Ford's Ombre Leather. It's an amazing, soft, kind of a little bit green leather fragrance with a little bit of sort of jasmine, a sambac jasmine. It's a greener kind of jasmine fragrance or note. It's really beautiful. The Tom Ford is really an amazing fragrance and so is my next one. And it's gonna be one from Prada. It's a little bit harder to find. It's not really at the stores anymore, so I fibbed a little bit there. But if you can still find it and it's still out there, it is one of the best fragrances ever. It has a little bit of a nostalgic feeling to it and it is Prada Lum. It's the black one, the intense. All the Pradas are pretty good, but this one right here is really one that the fragrance community just absolutely loves. 
and it's with good reason. It has a nostalgic feeling to it, and it's kind of contemporary. You can dress it up, you can dress it down. It's a fresher scent that has a unique DNA. It's really a wonderful fragrance. Unfortunately, I think it, do, it is discontinued. There are still some bottles out there. I wanted to throw this one in there because if you're getting into fragrances, this is one that you really need to try and see if you can get your hands on it. It's from 2017. This is a unique fragrance. There's a little bit of iris, there's a little bit of leather in there, and it has a good dose of nostalgia in the fragrance itself in the most wonderful kind of way. It's really beautiful. I hope Hope they bring this one back and they should. Now we started with a Dior or the second one was a Dior and we're gonna end with a powerhouse Dior. One of my favorite releases from 2021 is going to be Dior Sauvage and it's the Elixir. Now it's a little bit more money, I get it, it's around 140 something dollars and it's only going to be a two ounce bottle, but I promise you, you only need two sprays of this beast right here and you'll be good to go for two days. It's that good. It has a nostalgic feeling as well. It has the remnants of the original Sauvage in there, which is also a fabulous scent. In that one, I would pick uh, either the Elixir or the Eau de Parfum. Uh, even though the elixir to me, I think it's taken the cake out of those that are available. I really love this fragrance, maybe because of the little nostalgia that's in there. And it probably comes from the licorice note that's in this one. You're gonna have some licorice that's sort of hidden behind cinnamon, some cardamom, some nutmeg. It's really a beautiful fragrance created by a master perfumer, Francois Demachy. Excellent, perfect fragrance with a big, big bubble and amazing longevity. Sauvage Elixir is a definite hit, one of the preferred fragrances by the fragrance community and for a reason. All of these fragrances that I showed you here, you can buy with assured confidence that you will get compliments, they will smell great, they wear great, they will last, they have good longevity and you'll just smell great. Most of these you can wear all year long and smell absolutely fabulous. I hope you enjoyed the most highly voted fragrances in the fragrance community. If you did, don't forget to love, like, share, all those wonderful things. I'd love to have you on board. Maybe even subscribe for more content, okay? Until next time, I want you to take good care of yourself. Always smell nice, and I will talk to you soon.